when you deal with anybody that brings up religion to get even with you, be very careful. And when they, when they are telling you they are going to the human rights court, knows that you are doomed because you are not going to come out of that place alive. You know, I used to think that there was a separation between mosque and judiciary in Canada, but I was wrong. Now, failure to be Sharia compliant on your own property can result in a huge monetary fine. Meet John Alabi. He's a 52-year-old Ontario man who's being issued a Sharia ticket for $12,000 by this province's Human Rights Tribunal. Now, some background. John is a Christian man who came to Canada 22 years ago from Nigeria. Since then, he's followed Canadian laws. He's worked really hard. He now carries not one but two jobs just to ensure his family's cared for. John's the sort of guy and the sort of story that every Canadian should be proud of. But instead, he's being labeled a human rights violator. John is now being ordered to pay an Arab Muslim couple, his former tenants, a whopping $12,000 for a failure to accommodate their religion, all because John didn't remove his shoes when showing the bedroom where the couple prayed to potential new occupants. I am so disappointed in the human rights. And you know what? This is no human right. They want, they, they, if, they, if the human right they really want to represent the human being that they always call without any bias or their name as saying human right. What human right is there? If a Muslim couple insisted that I should remove my shoes or request that I should remove my shoes in their house and I didn't oblige, what about my right to say yes or no? Is that human right? What, where is that human right part? For two years, John has been racking up legal fees and spent a huge amount of time combating the case filed by Walid Madkour and his wife, Hiba Ismail. His difficulties, well, they were actually compounded when he lost his young son during the proceedings. But when John asked for a delay in his hearing citing his child's death, both the Muslim applicants and the Human Rights Tribunal, they refused him the time. They said that John's reasons did not justify an adjournment. John said that on top of preparing for this case amid his family's grieving, the situation was made even worse as he was expected to pay out of pocket for his legal expenses while his Muslim accusers got a free ride. It's been going on since 2015. It got to a point whereby I have to drop the lawyer that I hired to go for a paralegal because I could not just afford the stress, the embarrassment, the financial... Um, problem this um, the financial weight this has on me and to the point whereby I have to um, just go along with wh whatever comes around me in terms of legal representation and um, for them they got everything for free they have a human rights lawyer probably top class human rights lawyers that took their case right from the beginning to the end because Everything is available for these people to use to get to whatever they want to get into, into society. And you know what? That is one of the biggest holes in the whole system. So the trouble started after John, the landlord, tried to prepare this unit for future tenants after the Muslim couple agreed to terminate their lease back in 2015. Madkour, the Muslim husband, wanted a one-hour notification of any showing scheduled in addition to the 24-hour notice required by Ontario law, so to ensure that his Muslim wife was properly covered and that they weren't in the middle of their five daily prayers. But when the landlord said that he'd stick to the 24-hour notice and reminded his tenant of Ontario law, Madakur accused John of racism and a violation of their civil rights in a text. So John, well, he texted back the words, welcome to Ontario, Canada a text that John told the tribunal was meant to express that rules in Ontario are different than in Quebec, where this couple had lived just before. The Human Rights Tribunal then cited this text, John's text, the words, Welcome to Ontario, Canada, as proof of discrimination and harassment under the code. The Human Rights Tribunal used a phrase in which John was literally reminding his tenant of Ontario law as an example of how John broke Ontario law. And it gets even weirder. 
The tribunal also agreed with the tenants who said that they were intimidated when they heard loud pounding while their landlord shoveled snow outside their door late one night, an occasion during which Ishmael, the Muslim wife, said that she was so frightened she had to call police. Imagine shoveling snow for other people being deemed intimidation. So now, in addition to paying them $6,000 each for injury to their feelings and their dignity, John must also take an e-course on human rights in rental housing. John told me that he's worried that this case has just set a precedent for other landlords who he fears will also have to become Sharia compliant. Do they have any choice? This is what is gonna happen. Believe me, I'm here today. You look at other people, many, many more other people will pass through this route. And you know what, God help them. Because right now I am so incapacitated. I am so, so I, I, you know, I don't even know how best I can say this. Because even on my own property, I have to be subjected to a kind of rules and regulations because of the belief of another person. After meeting John, it was really hard not to be affected. He met me during his lunch break and he had to rush back to work where he's under now an unimaginable increase in stress, owing an extra $12,000 to this couple who have dragged him through this costly court system for over two years. But like John said, it's actually about more than money. And like John said, this is Canada. When did a failure to remove one's shoes in a Muslim prayer space become against the law here? When, when did a failure to make your own property Sharia compliant become punishable by fine? Isn't there supposed to be a separation of mosque and state in Canada? And if so, why is Sharia law being pushed on this man, John, to the tune of $12,000? So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna start a crowdfunding page at www.help john.ca to help cover his hefty Sharia ticket. To be honest, I hate the idea of any money, a single penny going to these Muslim bullies who are now inflicting their worldview onto an unwilling individual. But I hate the idea of John going this battle alone even more. I am personally donating to help John cover his $12,000 Sharia ticket. And I hope you will too. Our goal is the full $12,000. And if you're anything like me, you know why it's important why we help John out. John embodies Canadian values and should not be treated as a second class citizen just because he's not a Muslim and did not submit to Sharia codes. John is a hardworking immigrant who spent the last quarter century in this country building a better life for his family. And I, for one, I'm not gonna stand idly by as Ontario's kangaroo court tries to tear that down. Go to www.helpjohn.ca to show that patriot support is still stronger than Sharia law in this country. For the Rebel.media, I'm Faith Goldie. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel and please visit helpjohn.ca.